Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing swell. I have been thinking about a couple. I mean, you know me, I'm always thinking about things. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about systems thinking and improving your thinking and all kinds of things. And I guess for me, a lot of people are like, okay, so what do I actually do? Mm -hmm. How do I actually practice this? How do I get better at it? How do I get so that it's fast in my head and it's not clunky and mm -hmm. feeling unnatural? And um, for me, the obvious end point for that is the moves, mm -hmm. just practicing the moves. So in a, in, a, in a way, I think we should spend a little time just saying, how, you know, how do we practice? How do we get better? I think that's what, what's on everybody's mind. People want to change. They want to get better at thinking. They want to have better outcomes in their life. And they just want to know what to do, to actually do. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say the, the starting point is the moves. The, yeah. the moves are um, uh, what we call a Pareto law. The research shows it's a Pareto law that uh, is like an 80-20 rule. So you put essentially 20% of the effort gets you kind of 80% of the results, let's say. Mm -hmm. And the moves are a Pareto law. The, f the five moves are a Pareto law that that for cognition. Right. So it's a starting point. If you want to get that the last 20%, like, like all sports and all things that you know require human performance the first 80 percent will take 20 percent of the time and the last 20 percent of a performance will take 80 percent of the time and effort right. right so you can get pretty good at you know i don't know uh throwing the javelin or something like that <laughs> that is the um, most random example like, of like all the things sport. you could have said Basketball, soccer, yoga, anything that most Well, I was thinking <laughs> Olympics, right? Like, like, so you can get pretty good at throwing the javelin. <laughs> like if you went out and practiced throwing the javelin for like an hour, yeah, you'd probably be better than 80% of the population at throwing the javelin. Given that I mean, that, that's kind of yeah. wacky if yeah. you think about it. If you just spent an hour throwing the javelin, mm -hmm. you'd probably be better at throwing a javelin than most of the population. Now, to get to the Olympics, you're going to have to spend, you know, 80% of the effort to get that last 20%. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, to be better than everybody. So the, the, the moves are a Pareto law of cognition where if you practice these five moves, you're going to get most of the value. Right. Um, but Maybe. it is a start because there's some tremendous value that happens beyond the moves in understanding DSRP, the 483 dynamics and all those kinds of things. Right, but what you're basically saying is uh, you'll get the best return on your investment if you focus your time on yeah, these on these sure. first five yep. moves because you're going to get mo most of the way there yeah. and, and definitely much further than most people who aren't practicing the moves. Absolutely. Right. So when you say practice the moves, mm -hmm. what does that actually mean? What does that look like? Well, so the, 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 that's a really good question, and we, we've spent, you know, the first – Boy, Don't tw say. <laughs> 25 years of our research, we mostly focused on the existence and the effect of DSRP and knowing them and being aware of them. In the, in the last, uh, I would say probably 12 years or, you know, eight years, we've really been focused on that question yeah. how do you practice it what do you pray what specifically do you practice and how do you practice and so i would say there's a lot more to learn about how to practice and in, in terms of the research on practice but we know some things we know that we know what to practice practice the yes. moves and we have some pretty um pretty good understanding of the beginnings of how to practice so you can imagine this almost like I think of it like we're at the dawn of, of, of a thing I call mental fitness today. And, um, and you can imagine, I don't know, I don't know the history of, of physical fitness enough to, to cite chapter and verse on it, but you can imagine there was a time where all humans were physically active, right? Before in their daily we were life. in their daily yes. life. They were physically active, they were doing things, they were lifting things, they were farming, they were, you know, mm -hmm. 
you know, walking, doing all kinds of things, right? And then somebody said maybe because we're we were moving in away from some of those types of things, somebody said, what if what if we like practiced physical fitness? Right? Yeah. What if and you can imagine that's like a big leap, right? What what if instead of just being instead of just moving in your daily life, doing things uh, lifting things, all that. What if we isolated those movements and practiced them? Yes, and I would imagine that that came from as we had all these advances in technologies and cars and all these things that actually mm -hmm. removed the day-to-day -day physical, they said, oh, actually, our health is suffering. We have to invent something called physical fitness. Yeah, perhaps. Right? Or we're missing, we're yeah. missing that in our life or something, right? Because yeah. I, I imagine if you're... If you're working in the fields all day long on a farm, mm -hmm. you're probably not thinking after dinner I'm going to get a workout in. You know, like <laughs> you're you you got a workout in working on the farm all day, right? And and so if if you're in an agrarian kind of thing, you're not going to go be doing push-ups or you know sit-ups or whatever. What's remarkable about that is when that cusp happens, we see incredible performance gains across all kinds of different areas, right? So I remember, for example, in rock climbing, w when when you trained for rock climbing, you went rock climbing. Right. You just went rock climbing. Now that involved hiking to the site or driving to the trailhead, hiking to the site, getting to the site, hoping that it wasn't raining, you know, doing your rock climbing, getting back to the car driving home, right? Yeah. That's a lot of extra stuff to be able to rock climb. Right. Well, today you go to the gym, you go up and down and up and down and up and down, you get you get more practice in. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what do we see? We see the the far end the far end of performance of rock climbing is is increasing pretty steadily and pretty remarkably, right? Right. The same thing for any sport, basketball, football, whatever, that we're, we're isolating activities and training in those activities and we're getting more reps in those isolated training activities and then we're figuring out how to get those isolated activities to be more synthetic right. in practice and things like that. And so we're seeing just a, you know, a, an explosion of talent. We see because this in MMA in too, practice, right? Like yeah. the kids, the kids are practicing when they're little so because we know how to practice so you know rather than saying hey kid go get in a bunch of fights it's like hey kid you can <laughs> practice as a little kid jujitsu and, and yeah. muay thai and you know boxing and all these kinds of things and now we have these superstars that are 20 years old or 18 years old and they're just remarkable right yeah yeah so all I'm saying is this: I think we're at the cutting edge I think we're at the at a, almost a, a, a the beginning of that moment when we say, yeah, we're thinking all the time. Out in ambient world, we're thinking all the time. Everybody thinks all day long, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But what if we isolated some of that process and yeah. understood some specific moves that we can do that will strengthen our thinking across the board? in remarkable ways. And I think that's where we're at today. We're at the cusp of that revolution. It seems to me there was a moment in time where we had to purposefully create mechanisms by which we could practice physical fitness yeah. because it wasn't happening in any in any other sort of organic way in our life. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you make that parallel to what you're now calling mental fitness, I think maybe the, the parallel is you know, everybody sort of thinks they think, but I think a lot of people are experiencing outcomes they don't quite want, or they're just, they're not quite where they want to be in terms of their optimal performance or the mm -hmm. kinds of things they want out of their life. Mm -hmm. And so now what I think you're saying is, well, let's, let's be purposeful in thinking about how we're thinking about things as a means to get better outcomes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's partially, it's partially that, that we need more time to sort of think about our thinking mm -hmm. but that's that's in large part because the complexity and speed and and competitiveness 
of society makes thinking critically important. Yes. Right? I think that's right. I mean, there are, I guess you could say in the past, there were times where, you know, if you got it roughly right, you'd be fine. Well, today, there's, you know, if you get it roughly right, maybe you're not. Yeah. And, and if you don't do that quickly, if you're not fast, you know, life's moving on. So it's a combination of the increase in complexity, the increase in competitiveness, speed, the increase in speed yeah. of, of life, uh, right? And, um, and that's all of that is because of the increase in interconnectivity of the world and things like that. I mean, uh, so, so I think that requires us to be higher performance thinkers. Yes. Right? And once you need those performance gains, you're not going to get it by just tooling around. Right. You're going to get it by focusing and being like, oh, okay, what, you know, in order to get this, in order to get my jump higher. Right. I got to work on specific muscle groups with specific movements mm -hmm. that's actually going to have a huge effect on my jump aside from just jumping. Yes. Right. So, so maybe what we know is, just jumping alone isn't going to be the best way to get your jumping higher. You can right. do all these isolated drills and activities that are going to help you. In the same way that just sprinting around the track isn't the only thing that sprinters do to get faster. Right. They're doing a lot of very isolated, specific, tactical, and technical things to get faster. Yes. Right. That's right. And so the same thing is true with thinking. And there's a lot on the line when it comes to thinking, because, you know, if whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're, you know, a high level person of, of any kind, yep. the way you're thinking is going to drive what you do, what you choose to do, what you choose not to do, all those kinds of things. So thinking becomes really important. Right. Because it's underneath every decision you it's make, underneath. every behavior you exhibit. Yeah. It's all stemming from how you're thinking about something. Or yeah, your yeah. emotional controls, your, your, you know, being able to have emotional intelligence, all of that's driven by thinking. I guess to me, the challenge, the challenge a little bit is, you know, you can purposefully practice physical movements that are related to some outcome you want physically. But in terms of mental fitness or increasing sort of your thinking capabilities, that requires bringing things into your sort of conscious, it's a conscious practice. Yes. Um, so it, it seems to me that there's a little bit, there could be a little bit more of a hurdle coming from unconscious to conscious practice of, you know, sort of reminding yourself, it, it's not easy to bring unconscious into conscious. It, it does require a moment of time or a series of time where you're reminding yourself to bring those things into your into your conscious your awareness, right? Yeah. We talk about metacognitive awareness and those yeah. kinds of things. Again, I just think we're on the cusp of a very exciting time in cognition where we where we make it ultimately practical and pragmatic and technical and uh, and around not simply understanding cognition for understanding's sake, but understanding it in such a way that we can do things that make us better at it. Yes. Right? And I think if you go to that moment, again, it's hard to even it's hard to even conceptualize that moment where you, where somebody says, "What if what if I put it like a, you know, bar on my on the back of my neck?" <laughs> yeah, right. And I put some weights on the bar. Yeah. And then I go Definitely. Down in a squat, and then I go back up again, and I do that ten times. Yeah, people would think that was insane, <laughs> yeah, right? Like that at that moment, and, and imagine like you doing that in in an agrarian society where, and people are like, "What's he doing? <laughs> Why is he doing that? We right. just lifted hay bales all day, or we just lifted, yeah. you know, whatever sorghum or some grain all day. Yeah. Why is he doing that? <laughs> and yet." You know, that's the birth of the modern squat. Yeah. Right? Right. And you think of all these activities that there was a moment when somebody said, you know, I could get this benefit that I need in the day, right, mm -hmm. by doing a push-up or by doing a sit-up or by doing – and then and then those basic body exercises became 
you know, weight machines. And now look at this, all these machines we have and all these things that we have. I mean, whole industries have spawned around yes. these basic movements of the Huge body. Industry. Yes. Right. Yes. And and that you're moving for the sake of movement. Yeah. So that the rest of your day movement is easier so that if you, I always think about like a push up, if you said, well, push ups, push ups, are totally abstract. Mm -hmm. Right. That sounds weird because it's a push up. You're like, it, there's nothing abstract seems, about yeah, a push up. Right. Seems like pretty not abstract. It's right. totally abstract. Go f go in your day and find an activity that you do that is a push up. You mean an activity that requires you to do a push up like an movement. actual push up? Yeah. There's none mm -hmm. throughout your day. Now, mm -mm. Unless same thing for a it. squat, same thing for a curl. But if I have to get down on the floor, grab a toddler with my arm mm -hmm. and get back up yeah or if i have to get down and get two big grocery bags and get back up well i'm doing harsh part of a push-up yeah i'm doing part of a squat i'm doing part of a curl in order to do that action mm -hmm. that functional thing yeah and that's why those things are so powerful they come from things we're doing all the time we're bending down yeah we're bending over we're squatting we're pushing off we're pushing up yeah we're pulling in mm -hmm. right so we're doing all these things in our regular day yeah and so these are the abstracted movements from those things from things that are every day happening right so these sort of um Practice and, and what you're calling abstract moves actually serve the functional movement that we need every day, every day. to go through our life. About everything. Yes. And, and things that are important to us, like picking mm -hmm. up our child mm -hmm. or getting the groceries or things that are just every day important. And also things like you're at a car accident and you need to help somebody get out from under a car. And that takes tremendous strength. Yeah. And, and you're, you're able to do it because you have that strength. Yes. Right. Yes. So things that are every day and things that are not every day, things that where you have to crisis, do, crisis and things like that. Something all of those things best. take strength and all of those things benefit from physical strength. Mm -hmm. Well, the same is true in the mental fitness area. Yes. And I think we're at the cusp of it. And these moves are the beginning of, you know, I get chills talking about it because these moves are the beginning of that moment. When somebody goes, what if we put a bar on our back? Yeah. Except they're for cognition. They're for right. our mental fitness. Right. And so if we practice these moves, and, and there are many more moves. These are just the first five. We've found uh, there's over oh, pretty close to 70 moves. Mm -hmm. But these are the first five that are that are ones. the most important. Mm -hmm. And if we practice these moves, you're just going to see huge gains in your life. In your whole life, in, in, in the everyday and in the crisis moments, you're going to see huge gains. So if we talk about the moves, mm -hmm. so for example, if you say there's an is, is not, there's an is, is not move. Yep. And that's sort of the abstraction. But I'm standing in line and I'm trying to distinguish between do I want a hot coffee, a cold coffee, a chai, mm -hmm. and, oh, I mean, all, I mean, it used to be just coffee. Now there's like. 400 types of yeah. coffee and milks and all kinds of things. Well, that is functionally an is is not list. Absolutely. In my life, that's helping me decide what is my beverage. Now, that's sort of a silly example. Yeah, but I'll give you another example that maybe not the exact same thing, which is we have these terms out there, these distinctions, these these words that he, none of us are really clear what they mean. What does organic mean mm. when we're at the grocery store? Does it mean what we think it means? How is it different from grass fed? Yeah. How is it different from free range? How is it different from pasture, uh, pasture, pasture raised? Pasture How's it, raised yeah. th there's all these terms, right? And a lot of them are you know, greenwashed or meat washed. I don't know what the word is, but but uh, a lot of them are used to manipulate us because, uh, you know, like I read the other day, gra what grass fed means today is not what it meant like 10 years ago. Grass fed mm -hmm. meant these animals were going out Roaming and eating free. grass. Mm -hmm. Today, they're bringing the grass into factory farms 
and the animals are in slots eating the grass. So they are they are literally grass fed. So this is a manipulation, but it's a distinction problem. And the problem is none of us know what the distinctions are anymore, which by the way, probably the industry wants that to be confusing because then you just give up and you sort of say, yeah, or the industry. Which one do I buy? Like they're all the same or something. Right. Like the that. industry wants us to not distinguish among them. To and not I believe they're all kind of the same thing. Absolutely. Um, even if there there are some pretty significant. I mean, we should probably look that up. Yeah. Given that we are sort of an all organic kind of household. Yeah. But the the idea is to to keep us from distinguishing from them in a, in a sense to sort of I don't want to say manipulate. But maybe it is manipulate manipulate us to believe that we're eating much healthier. We're paying more for our food, and we're kind of being taken advantage because we're not totally distinguishing between and among them. Right. So that's an is is not list. Mm -hmm. Is is not list is just again you take the thing you know what it, what is organic in, in the in the in the sense of organic food, not the word organic from biology or something or chemistry, but and what is not organic. Right. Right. And then you make a list. It is this, it is that, it is this, and it is not this, it is not this, it is not this. Right. And that's a simple move. But boy, across the whole spectrum of life, super important. Mm -hmm. If your team is using terminology in business or, or in your work, and they don't all have the same definition. Right. That leads to all kinds of problems, right? Yeah, I mean, you could literally just substitute the word initiative. Here. Initiative, yeah. And then what's not the initiative? And, yep. and you know, how many times do we hear people say, oh, if only I had known what my boss was thinking was initiative versus right. what wasn't it, we would have saved a lot of time, money, and effort because I did a couple of things right. that were not in her distinction. Yes, exactly. Right? So... That's and that better. brings up an, another move. Is is not move. That's much better. That's is is not. Then but what you just mentioned another move, which is P circle, right? Mm -hmm. Which is that you have multiple points, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll draw a little square frame in the upper right hand corner for the points and a view. And that this is the colored in. Right? So these are different things that are looking at this this thing. So what you just said was my boss mm -hmm. sees an initiative one way. In other words, my boss has one definition for the in initiative, one distinction. Mm -hmm. There, she is is not is is nodding the distinction initiative differently than I'm is is nodding the yeah. The so initiative. each one of these has their own little is is not list. Right. So this is this them. is your boss and this is you and this might be your your other colleague or something yeah. like that. And you're looking at the quote unquote initiative. Each of you have has a different is is not list for for that initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's called P circle or perspective circle because there's you know in this case three perspectives made up of a point and view, and the view is different for all those points. And right. what we want to do if we're just trying to establish a team, the team is fundamentally based on sharing mental models, which yes. means we don't want them to, when they think of the initiative, mm -hmm. we want them to think of the same thing. Well, meaning there's one point, which yep. is the team, yep. and they share the, the same view of the initiative. Right. Yeah, or that there's three points and and they and all three see, points see, see the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Right. They yeah. all see the same parts. They all see the same relationships. They all see it roughly the same as being model. the same thing. Yeah. They have the same mental model, the same, the same meaning model. of the word initiative at yep. that moment. Absolutely. So that what we just showed is what we call a mashup, because we mashed up is is not move with P circle move. So mm -hmm. this is the equivalent of like, you know, a burpee is kind of a mashup of a bunch of different moves, right? Not a fan or of a, burpees. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I who mean, is, I, you know, they're good, but do them. Or, or you know, if if you did like a curl and then a press up or yeah, something yeah. like that, right? Well, or, the newest thing that I've been doing is yeah. the squats with the. So you do a squat and you have the arm with, with a the, shoulder press. Yeah, you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm working on it. Right. So that that's a mashup. That's a, mashup. a mashup just means. Yeah. 
these moves in real life, they don't happen. Like I said, when you pick up a child off the floor, you're not, you're not using one move. Right. You're using multiple moves, yeah. right? And you're mashing them up. Uh-huh. And you're using the muscular structure and skeletal structure from all those different moves. And and this is the same for mental fitness, right? In real life, you're going to be doing all these moves together in mashup. They're going to interact. Yeah. But these five are going to get you to understand any level of system that you're dealing with, uh-huh. any complexity or any simplicity of a system that you're dealing with. So that's two of them. Oh, you know what would be a good one following off of this example Mm -hmm. is say each one of these, say they they agree that there are three parts to this initiative. Yes. Right? And and then the question is, how are the parts related? So let's say that the initiative is made up of three parts and we got that from, you know, talking to your people. Perspective circle. And we label those one, two, and three. And what we want to do is use, so that's, this move right here is called zoom in, mm-hmm. right? Which is just zooming in and seeing the parts of something. Yep. And then we can mash that up with part party move. Because parts like to party. Because parts like to party. And part party move is connecting the dots. So when we, we hear this all the time, we need to connect the dots. Well, we yeah. do. We need to constantly be connecting the dots. One of the biggest problems with our society today and all of our systems, the healthcare system, the education system, our governmental systems, yeah, our social, system, social services. services. Of One of the biggest problems today is that we don't connect the dots. When you go see a, a healthcare provider and you get referrals to seven other healthcare providers, Specialist. specialists, those specialists don't don't talk to each other about your file and 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 actually nobody's connecting the dots and you're left with no medical training or anything like that person perhaps trying to connect the dots about your own because you are care. actually a highly related system yes, of parts exactly and so if each specialist is isolating a part Absolutely. and nobody's talking about the relationship They're between not connecting them among the them dots. And then think in our education system, what does a student do every day? They go to this class and then they they go to math and then they go to English and then they go to history and they go to Spanish. They never go to a class that helps them connect the dots. So what are they, what happens? They think all these disciplines are like these isolated Mm -hmm. things. Well, that's not the way the real, the real world doesn't work in disciplines. The real world is totally integrated. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and kids are making connections between math and science and science and history and history and PE. And, you know, they're not making these connections. Right. But those connections exist in reality. Yeah. So, we, it, again, it's because we don't connect the dots. There is not a there's not an organization. Silos is another example. What are silos? Silos are unconnected dots. Yes. Of, that are departments. Unrelated parts. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. When we say connect the dots, what are we really saying? We're saying, oh, we, we're saying part party. Part party helps us connect the dots. It helps us go, how are these things related? Well, it's considered that they're related in the first yeah. place. Just see that they're, are they or are they not related in the first place? And then not everything has to be related. Maybe the things, it's as important to recognize what's not related as what is. This episode is sponsored by Training Camp the ultimate online spot for building the mental fitness that drives personal and professional change and success. At Training Camp, you'll have access to the science and practice of thinking with personalized thinking assessments, tiered training, and best of all, practice that improves skill. Go to cabrerlab.org to learn more. And now, Back to the episode. What I was saying is that's how you how you how you don't ep- you don't end up with these spaghetti bowls of everything is connected to everything is connected to everything, and you're saying sometimes it's okay that things are not actually related. It's absolutely okay because what we want to do is we want to love reality, mm-hmm. right? And we want to get it right. And if something's not connected, like if I got uh, if I got a terrorist network. And, and I go, hey, these guys are connected, and these guys are connected, and these guys are connected, but these guys are not connected. Right. Well, that tells me something important about that terrorist network. Yes. Right? That tells me these guys could be collaborating, these guys could be, and these guys could be. And if this guy's c- collaborating with this guy, and this guy's 
collaborating with this guy and this guy's collaborating with this guy, then maybe there's a possibility of this guy collaborating with this guy. Right. You know, that's just a very simple example. But the how are things related and not related is very important. Well, it's interesting, too, because first we asked, are they? And then you just said, how? And so if you wanted to answer how these are related, that would actually mash in another move. Yeah, that's RDS, RDS barbell, which we also call relationship zoom. And that's just taking, zooming in. So we're going to... We're going to zoom in on one of these relationships. We're going to say, hey, what's this relationship right here between these two guys? And maybe take it offline. We'll take it over to here. And we go, okay, this is one and this is two. And we're going to have a relationship between them. We're going to distinguish. So first we're going to relate. That's the, the line is the relationship. Yep. Then we're going to distinguish the relationship, right? We're going to say, what? how are they related? Yep. So how are these guys related? Oh, they're are they brothers? Are they cousins? Are they rivals. friends? Are they rivals? Do they hate each other? Do they like each other? You know, blah blah blah. How are they related? Mm -hmm. And then what are some of the parts of the relationship? So we're gonna just like we zoomed in over here, we're just gonna zoom in to the relationship. Mm -hmm. So we can zoom into the to this thing, this node over here. And we can zoom into this node over here. And we can also zoom in to the relationship. So RDS is the relationship. That's this, right? Mm -hmm. Then the distinction. And then the zoom in of the distinction looking at the, the parts. S. That's that's why we call it RDS, relationship distinction system. Yeah. Relationship distinction system. Well, and what's important about this is from our research and, and the statistical patterns of how people think and don't think, mm -hmm. you know, what they tend to do. We know that we're pretty good at this. Well, we're not great at it, but we're better at this than some other things, breaking things down into parts. But we also know that we're really not good at breaking relate at zooming into relationships yes. first at considering relationships and then articulating them and examining them further through yes. this move We're yeah and we shared all that in the d and the distinction and system and relationship and perspective episodes yes all the, the research. research on where these pareto moves came from mm -hmm. and why they're so important so we we every one of these moves is critically important that you that you are getting good at doing them because they're they're absolutely happening all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm working some very particular muscle, you know, to get some wrist strength. There might be a movement I could do to yeah. increase my wrist strength, mm -hmm. right? Because I want because I really want to work on that, right? Yes. But most folks out there will tell you that there's some really basal moves, mm -hmm. right? That are going to build the most basic stuff that we use all the time. And it's going to be something like a push up yep. or a bench press. That's essentially the same moving, some kind of pull up yep. or pull down, pull down or, yep. or, you know, something that does that, right? Yeah. Some kind of squat, Yep. Right. Now, different people are going to argue about which one to do and all that kind of stuff. But it's going to be some kind of squat. Right. Yeah. Some kind of sit up yes. or leg lifts, some kind of, you know, core Course. movement. Yep. Some kind of anterior chain thing. To, anterior chain, like the opposite. The, of the opposite sit -up. of the sit up. Yeah. I'm probably missing. Some. Oh, some kind of curl. Yeah. You know, a lunge is going to be like a squat sort yeah. of. Right. It's just different variations. But I'm, I'm saying, like, you're talking about five moves. Yeah. Five basic moves drive almost every movement mm -hmm. is going to be made up of those five moves. Well, these five moves are a lot like that. Yes. These five moves are going to drive every set of thoughts you have. Yep. They're going to be part, whether you like it or not. And, and it be, behooves you to know these moves because awareness of these moves will help you navigate those thoughts better. And so, you know, we're just talking about is, is not one. Zoom in, two. There's also zoom out. Yeah, we didn't talk about We didn't about talk that. about zoom out. Yep. You know, we sometimes think of those as one move, zoom in, zoom out. Zoom out just means think about what's what yeah. it's a part of. So let's just... Three, part party. Four, RDS barbell. And five, P-circle. 
I was just going to say, if we're going to, if we wanted to just quickly sh say, zoom out would mean we'd ask the question, what is this initiative a part of? Yeah. So we know it's a thing with parts. What is it a part of? So maybe it's a part of uh, a strategic goal to increase our market share or something okay. like that. Yeah. So it's strategic like, goal number, that's zooming out. number five or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And exactly. that's what we tend not to do. We tend not to ask that question. Yeah. Or, or which departments is this initiative part of? Yes. Right. So then we can see, oh, well, in order for this initiative to be successful, we got to deal with engineering, sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. Or the Department of Defense and the Department of, you know, health and human services and whatever. Yeah. yeah. That that's going that's zooming out. That's right. really important. So these five moves are going to and mashing up these moves. So we call we sometimes will call these the five plus. Yeah. The and the plus is the, is the mashup, mm -hmm. the mashup. So what you'll see, and I'll, maybe maybe we can do something different here. Yes. So all of us, without even knowing it, are so familiar with networks. Yes. Right? I mean, networks are everywhere today. They didn't used to be a part of our everyday life. but yeah. And a network is essentially just a bunch of nodes and a bunch of relationships. So we and, and it can be related and not related in whatever way you want to, you know, think about it. So let's, you know, just make some relationships. And that's a network. And we can relate all of them if you want. So this is a network. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, for a moment, let's just see where let's see any network. So mm -hmm. this could be an atomic network made of atoms, this could be a molecular network made of molecules, this could be a cellular network made of cells, this could be an organismic ecological network mm -hmm. made of organisms and flora and fauna. It could be it could be a neuronal network like your brain, it could be a social network, it could be yeah. a terrorist network, it could be any kind of network. It doesn't yeah. matter what kind of network. So it crosses the whole span. It could be your friendship network, you name it. Make yeah. sense? So this so thing could represent anything. So this structure is any network. Any, any system, things. any okay. network, any anything, right? Now, let's look at, we have distinctions. We have the identities. This is an identity, 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 right? Of distinctions are made up of mm -hmm. identity, right? Yeah. And other. Would it be helpful to keep this in a simple example? Yeah. So say these are people. Yeah. This is Bob, Sally, Bob, Bill. Sally. So you, you imagine every, every one of these knows is a different person with a different name. Right. right. So their identity is different. Et so they all have the identity, yep. which is their, in now, this example, their name. In this case, Bob is could also be referenced as as not Sally. Right. So he's there's the Bob's also the other. So these mm -hmm. distinctions are Bob's not Sally, and Sally's not Bob. And by the way, if uh, if Joe over here is also not Bob. And not Sally, mm -hmm. and this is not Joe, and not right. not Joe, right? Yep. Then basically, what happens is that that Bob and Sally are now grouped in the not Joe group. Yes. And uh, and a bunch of other combinations are created as yeah. a result of that. So right. I don't want to go too far into that because it gets kind of complex, but yeah. Um, okay, so we, we deal with the fact that we have all these distinctions. We also have all these relationships. Yes. Right? Every one of these relationships, those are in, in network theory called edges, but we're, we'll call them relationships, right? So there's your part party. Yeah. Right? So I just They're showed you related. DIO list. I yeah. just showed you part party. There's your part party. Mm -hmm. It's happening in every network. That's pretty cool. Let's look at any one of these relationships. Let's take a different color. Oh, we're getting fancy. Right? Let's take it this relationship right there. Okay. Between these two or between Sally and, and Bob. Okay. Well, the relationship between Sally and Bob is a complex dynamic. So there's your RDS. You can zoom into this relationship. You can talk about all the parts of the relationship. You could even do a part party between those parts and so on and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So there's your RDS barbell move. Right there. In every one of these relationships, zooming yes. into every one of these relationships. And there's more. 
you can zoom in to any one of these things. Yes. And you can zoom out of any one of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's there's structure in the network. There's levels, hierarchical levels in the network. So we could zoom in. Again, this could be Bob, but it could also be, uh, you know, a department, a division. Yeah. Well, we could zoom into Bob and his physiology and his metabolic rates and mm -hmm. all that, blah, 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 all those parts of Bob. Yeah. Or we could zoom out and see, you know, Bob is part of a family and blah, all kinds of things, right? Yeah. So we can zoom in and zoom out of all these things. And finally, you know, Bob, he's got a perspective. Bob only has a perspective of the things he knows about. Right. Well, Bob actually turns out to be the, the least connected Bob. and probably maybe has the least perspective of the network. Right, because Bob is only seeing yeah. these two so things. Yeah, so Bob's perspective is different than Bob. Bob's perspective is influencing Bob, but it's, it's Bob's perspective of the network. Mm -hmm. And what does Bob see and not see? Right. And what does what does Sally see and not see? And how is what Sally sees and not sees different or the same as Bob? Very different because Bob has two and Sally has three. Right. And so there's Joe, a piece of Joe is a rock star. Joe's connected to a lot more. Right. So we could we could take Joe, Sally and Bob. Mm -hmm. And there's your points. Mm -hmm. And then we could take any other thing in the network, which doesn't always have to be people. It doesn't all, all right. have to be people. It could be a, a ecological network full of all kinds of things, tools, technologies, all right. concepts, whatever. But we could take Joe and Sally and Bob and look at any other part or grouping in the network and see that they have different perspectives or similar perspectives or, you know, same perspectives on any other part of the network. Yes. Or any other whole in the network. So in doing that, we might see, for example, that like in those terrorist networks, we might say, well, actually, these these folks are all a group. So there's your part whole structure. Yeah. And then these folks over here are a group. Yeah. You know, and and strangely enough, Joe, you know, Joe, Joe doesn't have a group. Joe's a group of one. Oh, right. And so we have part whole structure, we have perspectival structure, we have relational structure, we have zoom in, zoom out, part whole structure, we have distinctions going on. And that's for every single network that exists ever anywhere. All the time. All yeah. the time. So if you learn these five moves, what you're essentially doing is really deeply understanding how systems are structured. And also how your thinking is structured to try to understand those systems. In the beginning, you're gonna you're gonna learn each one separately just to get to understand each yes. one of the moves. You're gonna start practicing is is not. Like yep. look around every day. What are the distinctions I'm making and what is is, you know, like is is not my coffee, is is not, you know, my colleagues, mm -hmm. whatever it is, is is not my project. Then you're gonna start looking at zooming into things and then purposely zooming out because we know we're not yeah. good at that then you're going to do your um the relationships are mm -hmm. they related how are they related which is your rds barbell and then you're going to start thinking about different perspectives so I, I guess what i'm saying is if at the beginning it's okay to look at them separately to understand each one individually each one of the moves mm -hmm. because but eventually you're going to get yeah. to a more integral understanding through the mashup yeah because over time you're going to start to realize oh to really understand what is that water bottle, I have to zoom into its parts. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to get that fluidity. Or if I want to make a better water bottle, I'm yeah. going to have to, you know, if I want to design a, a, a better water bottle, I'm going to understand the parts of all the water bottles that exist and how they go together and how they're related yep. and why that leads to certain cost structures and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to design something that's, you know, better than those. Exactly. It has different parts and different relationships and, yeah. you know, does different things. Yeah. If we erase this, again, we can show, show exactly what to do in terms of practice. So we have is, is not. We have zoom in, zoom out. Mm -hmm. We have part party. RDS. We have RDS barbell. Or sometimes we call that relationship zoom. Yep. And we have P-circle. Yep. All right. 
and we call these two relationship zoom together. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we have one, two, three, four, five moves, right? Yes. And the first thing to practice is just remembering the names of the moves. Yes. Right. So that's number one. Remember the names of the moves. Mm -hmm. Right. So write them down, memorize them, put them on the cards, whatever. The next thing I would say is is exactly what you did. Start start seeing them in situ, in your environment. Every day. Every day. Just in start, your everyday life. Start seeing them, looking for them so that you can see examples of how pervasive these yes. things are. Right. Yes. While you're doing that, but I'll say step three, right? Step three is draw just the move without any information in it. The structure of them. And draw it, uh, you know, draw it all the time. Draw it like doodling. Draw it like, uh, you know, when you're bored, draw it. Mm -hmm. And draw it and, and try to get to the point where you can draw it real fast. Mm -hmm. Right? And draw it with, you know, multiple numbers of things. It doesn't matter what shapes you use. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like and be able to, again, be able to draw it relatively fast. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And draw it many times. Just to get that muscle memory. Just to get the muscle memory. Of draw the structure. It. You know, and try to try to draw. You can even dr try drawing it in, you know, however ways you want. Like, you know, you could just make it really, really simple. <laughs> you know, but it's the same structure. Just draw it. So here's this one. Perspective circle. And again, it could be four. It could be five. Get so that this drawing of it, because while you're drawing it, you're not only understanding it, you're burning the neurons to be able to just think it very quickly. Muscle memory. Muscle memory, mm -hmm. right? And and then what we're going to do is start applying that to your thinking. Start mm -hmm. applying it with, we, we've talked a little bit about all of your mental models are equal to information and organization. Right. Right. So what we're getting you to do is understand the, the moves Start seeing them out in the world. This one includes information. So you're seeing some information out in the world and you're or seeing the organization of it. But this one is just all you're seeing is just the organization, not the information. You're just getting the organizational structure. So let me slow that down a second. Yeah. So when you're in the coffee shop yeah. and you're distinguishing between coffee and tea. Yeah. The I is coffee and tea and the O is the is is not distinction. Yeah, so is, I want to make not. sure that's. That's so the th the th what you're thinking about is the information. The yes. way you're thinking about it is the organization. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. So that because this this concept is very important, but sometimes I think we we go a little fast on that one. Yeah, just think about that network example I gave, mm -hmm. right? The network is the organization. If it's a cellular network, that's different than if it's a terrorist network. Right. But the underlying structure of the network has a lot of the same properties, mm -hmm. a lot of the same dynamics, right? Yeah. And we know this from network theory that lots of different networks have very, very similar dynamics and very, very similar structures. Right. Right. Even though there couldn't be, there's wildly different information in those networks. One is, you know, f friendship groups of 12 year olds, and the other is, terrorist networks and the other is molecular networks. Right. What we're getting at is the underlying structure of cognition is the O. That's yes. DSRP. O is the same as DSRP. And these are the moves of the DSRP moves. So you're practicing the organizational structure. And then in this example here, like you said, at the coffee shop, you're kind of adding in a little bit of a little bit of information in things that you're used to seeing because that creates that relevancy yeah in that application and part. you can kind of connect to it and you can practice as you're going about your day without you know you know i wouldn't walk into a meeting and tr try it in front of all your friends right away you know because you could but you could but you, you know try it at the coffee shop try it on the way to work that get kind confident. of stuff get confident mm -hmm. build up your confidence but memorize the moves you know, see it, see it all around you. You're going to be blown away as soon as you, you're going it to be like, everywhere. how did I miss this for so however many years you've been on the planet? You're going to be like, how many, how, how did I miss this for that many years? Right. And then practice, get a little notebook and just draw the moves over and over and over again. 
That's I, like the more you do it, the better. That's the same as I go in and I do 10 push ups, 20 push ups, 30 yeah. push ups. These are your push ups. Do these. Yep. And you're going to get really good at it. And then, and then the next step, we'll get to those later, but you'll we'll start applying it. You start mapping conversations, mapping situations, all that kind of stuff. But this is a good start. Yeah. And this is doable. Totally. If you just start with this and get to this, you're, you're getting there and then start to really get that memory of the actual structures. But I, I think the first step is just seeing it everywhere. I mean, yeah. I remember I remember when I was a long time ago, introduced to all of this and wasn't familiar. I literally was, you know, like, what is this and what is it? Exactly. I'm like, what are the parts of that and what is it a and part you, of? And you, I just you were, took, I'm sure, long. shocked at how often these seemingly simple things would baffle you. Like you wouldn't know the answer. Yeah, but there was an answer. There's an answer, yeah. but you do. You're like, how? You know, how many coffee mugs have I drank out of in my lifetime? Never thought about without that. really understanding what a coffee mug is and how it's different from a glass or how it's like fundamentally like a good one to practice on is what is a sandwich? I always I always bring that a up. Great debate. It's a great debate. Like, does it have a hinge? Does agree. it not have a hinge? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Hot dog's not. A These sandwich. are big questions that plague. Humanity. But here's the thing. The other thing that was really surprising to me was that you you literally could ask these five questions about anything. Anything. And no matter what, you always learn something new by asking those five questions about whatever it was. Even things you thought you knew a lot about, mm -hmm. you learn a lot. And, and I don't think, I mean, I think that's part of what's so amazing about it is... Um, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, I was never a structural or visual thinker. I, I was, you know, good at school. I was a linguistic learner. I can, I can read crazy mm -hmm. amounts and get stuff. But training my brain to start to actually think structurally has completely changed. Yeah, it changes everything. How I when am you, and when what you I turn understand. your thoughts into object oriented things yeah. that can be manipulated and structured yeah. and restructured, it becomes. You you gain tremendous agency over your over this brain of yours that's doing a lot of subconscious things without your permission. I also think it really has brought my thinking into alignment with how things actually are because there's structure everywhere. And if you're not paying attention to structure, because like me, I was sort of locked in as a linguistic kind of learner. I never was paying attention to structure as a concept to begin with. So right. once you get both. Yeah, it's kind of the genius. iceberg, right? That <laughs> iceberg is like the top part is yeah. the information. And that's where most people spend their life that's right. is in information. But there's this whole other part under the surface, mm -hmm. which is really about the underlying structure of things and then, you know, the patterns of the structure. Yeah, because information is everywhere. Yeah. But there's also the way it's organized. So if we can see that, yeah. then we're going to get further. Well, so practice, now practice, 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 practice. Now we know where to start, how to start. It's a lot like push-ups, right? If you do push-ups for two weeks, two weeks, mm -hmm. you're going to see noticeable differences and feel different, right? right. And you're going to see differences in the amount of push-ups you can do. That's right. Same thing is true here. We're not talking about like you can literally change your thinking in two weeks by practicing these things. Definitely. And and you will see noticeable differences and you'll see you'll you will have the motivation from those things that you see, mm -hmm. just like you get motivation from going to the gym and you're like, oh, oh, this is more motivating. You'll get motivated by the things you notice about yourself. And what yes. you're able to do and what you're able to see and what you're seeing that other people aren't seeing. Yeah. And you'll gain motivation by doing this. Well, and others will notice it in you too, eventually. Yeah, it's just absolutely. like, you know, you're walking down the street and say, hey, you look great. You've been working out. Totally. You know, and then you're, you know, in a meeting and you're suddenly sort of leading the meeting without intending to because you're thinking about it differently and you're seeing these structures. And you'll see, you'll see that. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you.